Welcome back everyone to the Culture Channel's Explore Ontario series. Today we'll take you to a Gothic Revival mansion, a castle like no other. It stands to be one of the only true castles in North America. Sit back, we'll do the traveling for you, and enjoy our trip to the one and only Castle Oma. Casa Loma is located at a one Austin Terrace and the nearest subway stations are DuPont and St. Clair West stations. Um, to my proximity here, there's also the Casa Loma stables, which we highly recommend you go. Uh, there's an underground tunnel about 300 feet long uh, that you can take from Casa Loma to the stables. Built in 1914 by Sir Henry Pellet, it has withstood the test of time took three years and $3.5 million to construct, and we'll show you why. Come with us as we give you a tour through Casa Loma. This is the Oak Room. One of the most ideal places to shoot a movie, television series, or photo shoots. Many films such as X-Men Chicago were filmed here, and to my right is where Professor X's setup was for his office. To my left over here is where Richard Gere took many shots for the Oscar award-winning movie Chicago. And now is a restaurant for all of you to enjoy. This amazing structure, now owned by the City of Toronto, every year more than 400,000 tourists come to Casa Loma to see the attractions such as the estate gardens, uh, the secret passageways, and newly excavated rooms. Here with us is Rick Jarden. Uh, thank you, Rick, for having us today. My pleasure. Our guide, um, wonderful Rick, will be showing us around this beautiful castle. Um, Rick, would you like to introduce yourself and talk a bit about Casa Loma? Well, I've been the senior guide here for two decades, and a lot wow. of what I do is I tell the story of Sir Henry Pellet. Uh, he was the richest guy in the country 100 years ago, built the electric power plant at Niagara Falls, yeah. uh, railways and so forth. I had about $17.5 million in 1900. But uh, his dream was to build a European-style castle. He bought the land in 1905 and between 1911 and 1914 built what was then the largest home in Canada, second largest in North America. Uh, the design was 98 rooms, 30 bathrooms, 20 fireplaces, an elevator, an indoor swimming pool, a shooting yeah. gallery, a bowling alley, a swimming pool. Uh, but unfortunately, the First World War broke out before it was completed and he never really finished it afterwards. He lost a lot of his fortune and eventually um, lost the place for non-payment of back taxes in 1934. So at the time of his death in 1939, was nearly penniless. Yes, it's uh, unfortunate stories. Um, the castle itself has withstood uh, time, we could say. Um, it opened in 1914 um, at the end of construction, yeah? Um, yes. And over the years, it, uh, it was revitalized and also uh, expanded as well. Yeah, I mean, the com it was never completed when Sir Henry lived here, although he certainly lived in it for a decade. Yes. Uh, it was actually completed when it became a hotel in the 1920s. Did it try to raise money? Yeah. Uh, but that eventually failed. Uh, however, it's been operating as a tourist attraction since 1937. Mm -hmm. But more restoration has been done in the last seven years than the previous 70. This is exciting. I don't know how excited you all are, but uh, Rick, thanks for having us. Um, and I'm excited for this, this massive tour. All right. Well, okay, shall we get to it? Let's be off. All right. So anyhow, what I want to do is I want to show you Sir Henry's study, but on the way, the Great Hall was never finished when Sir Henry lived here. When World War I broke out, uh, land prices collapsed. Sir Henry had invested heavily in land in Western Canada and he suspended construction. He thought, of course, World War I was going to last for, you know, four months. It yeah. lasted for four years. 
But the entire time he lived here, there was scaffolding throughout this room. However, when he moved out in the 20s, he turned it into a hotel. And the hotel worked for a few years. But that's when the room was actually completed. So this sort of plastery look on the walls, that's really a look at the 1920s. Hmm. We have asked about maybe fixing the wood paneling here to make it look like it would have been, but currently City of Toronto has not given us an okay to do that. Uh, I want to show you Sir Henry's study. All right, let's do it. Now, in this room, we have two secret passages. Can okay. you guess where they are? Hmm. Now, when I have a child try it, <laughs> I always say, knock on the walls. Okay. I see so, a little crack here, so. All right, knock here, knock here. And here. You can mm. hear the difference, right? Yeah. And clearly, you can see where it's. Oh, la la. That leads downstairs to the wine cellar, the swimming pool, the 800 foot tunnel, the horse stables. However, there's another one in this room, but it's locked. Oh. But we can unlock it if we know how. Okay. Take one step over here. Sure. Now, do you see just beneath the thermostat a small white button? I do, yes. Yeah. What it's I want like a you doorbell. to do. Mm -hmm. yeah, let me turn on the light here. What I want you to do is I want you to take your right hand okay. and push in the wall. While you're doing that with your right, press the white button with your left. Okay. Go. Woo. And that <laughs> is how you open a secret passage. That is so cool. This is one of my memories from, from childhood. These secret passageways. Yeah. So exciting. Oh my gosh. Um, now, do you want what's to upstairs? Do you, do you know? Well, could you tell, tell you us? what. Uh, yeah. And I've got a nifty story to tell you halfway up. Okay. When Sir Henry lived here, uh, electric wiring was fairly new. Hmm. So between the floors, there's about a two foot crawl space. You can crawl through working the wires. You can actually access it through these. No way. Uh, some years ago, they were <laughs> working on the electric wiring beneath Lady Mary's bathroom, and they discovered a tank that all the plumbing into Lady Mary's bathroom had to go through. Couldn't, no other kitchen or bathroom had this tank attached to this plumbing. Hmm. Uh, it was for perfume. Sir Henry installed a perfume tank, so when Lady Mary turned on her taps, she would have lavender scented perfume water. Wow. How lavish. This is Lady Mary's... Lady Mary's uh, bedroom suite, and this was wow. unexpectedly important during the First World War. You see, half of our nurses went with the army across the ocean, and that meant as all these soldiers came back, we're talking hundreds of thousands of injured soldiers, well, 170,000 injured soldiers coming back, we were swamped. So Lady Mary got her girl guides to run a lot of these, you know, to keep a lot of these hospitals operating. And much of that operation across the country was run into this room. Amazing. The number one question I get asked by the general public is, what's that? People always wonder if that's a bidet. It's actually a foot wash. <laughs> So this is Sir Henry's bedroom, and Sir Henry has a secret hiding spot. And it's right here. Wow. Yeah, right. <laughs> now bear in mind, Sir Henry, at the time he lived here, was my height and weighed 300 pounds. Oh. So I'm gonna guess he didn't hide himself there. <laughs> but when I started working here in the late 1990s, there was a wall that went from here across to here. Oh. And this back area, we didn't know existed. Oh. We found it by accident. We were rewiring in the summer of 1999, drilled a hole through this wall, found this hidden room, took the wall off, nothing hidden inside. But the question is, oh. we know that wall was there sometime after, it was installed sometime after Sir Henry left. That means at some point, somebody built a hidden room that you can't get in and out of with nothing hidden inside. Why would you do that? Mm. What a mystery. There are a few odd mysteries. For example, Sir Henry's best friend, E.J. Lennox, was the architect of this building. Mm -hmm. He actually lived next door. Hey. After his death, they found buried in his backyard an eight-foot-tall, three-ton stone statue of a demon. A well, gargoyle of some kind. Why mm -hmm. it was buried next door, we don't know, but we now have it in our backyard. That's so cool. 
So this was intended as servants' quarters, but we actually use it today as the Museum of the Queen's Own Rifles Military Regiment, mm. which was Sir Henry's regiment. Mm. The highest mm. honor for bravery in the British Empire's Victoria Cross. This regiment won it nine times. Wow. During World War II, one of Britain's top secret weapons was sonar. And many of Britain's top training camps for their spies, many of the prison of war camps for the captured German officers were in this part of Canada. And a member of the British Secret Service approached not the city of Toronto, which owned the building, but the Kiwanis Club that operated it. Yeah. And for the duration of the war, while this was a tourist attraction, mm -hmm. dances on the ground floor every Saturday night. Basement in the stables of Castle Loma is where they put together a lot of the equipment, the sonar, that would help the British win the Second World War. Wow. And all that kept anyone out was a $1 padlock, behind which were 20 unarmed men. <laughs> so this stuff is all from the escape games that you can play here at night. Really? So you can pretend that you're in World War II and you're a spy and you're putting it all together. That's so cool. But we lock you in. <laughs> That's not and cool. And <laughs> you gotta figure out how you're gonna get out. That's not cool. <laughs> When did uh, the escape games open up? Um, well, it was just one. This was the original yeah. one. Okay. Uh, escape the Tower. There are now a total of four. Mm. Uh, there's one that takes place during Prohibition, when a lot of the illegal booze that went into the United States <laughs> came through Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, we have one that is for children, for families, yeah. called the Dragon's, uh, Dragon's Song. Cool. And there's a popular Canadian TV show called Murdoch Mysteries. And we do a tie-in with them in the carriage house, which is a, sort of a quasi-separate residence attached to the stables across the street. Could you tell us a bit about uh, the restoration projects in the castle, uh, as well as uh, unexcavated sites, possibly? Well, there's two things I would point out. First of all, um, Sir Henry used a very poor kind of concrete in Castle Loma, okay. which meant the city of Toronto between 1996 and 2011 was obliged to spend $1.2 million a year for 15 years mm. replacing the exterior concrete. Right. It wasn't an interior problem, just the exterior exposed concrete. Mm -hmm. But the very last thing they got to, we're talking 2011, was a port. Remember where the secret passage was? There was a porch just outside. Mm -hmm. When they got to that porch, they were so concerned about it, they were thought they could literally fall down while they're working on it. So oh, they man. went right to the foundation, excavated, and they yeah. found beneath the porch uh, a crypt. Okay. Inside the crypt, they found bones. Oh, dear. Not of a person. Dragon bones. <laughs> of a horse. Okay. Best guess are Henry's favorite horse, Prince, who he got when he was in high school, still had it when he was my age, but who died in 1909 as he was about to construct Castle Loma. Yeah, yeah. The stables was already built, but we feel that uh, he just loved his horse. He decided to put him in a special crypt right beneath the study. Oh, it's cute. <laughs> uh, but at any rate, a couple of years later, the city of Toronto brought in a company called Liberty Entertainment Group, who mm -hmm. actually specialize in restoring old buildings. Now this is their first tourist attraction, mm -hmm. but they'd spent the previous quarter century going through downtown Toronto, turning these old you know, warehouses and factories and popular nightclubs and mm. you know, restaurants. Right. So they kind of had the skill set the city was looking for yeah. because there really had not been a really serious restoration of a lot of the woodwork and the gilding and so forth in, in decades, if, if not ever in some cases. Right. So yeah, it's fair to say there's been twice as much restoration in the last seven years as there was in the previous 70. Um, now, since we're on the topic of, of um, Sir Henry Pellet, uh, hiring orphans and, and kids back in the day as servants. Um, the, the, the idea was that the standard of living was much higher in right. Canada than it was in Europe at the time. Okay. Uh, education, it was mandatory for younger kids in Ontario. It had been for 50 years then. So when he's bringing these kids over, mm -hmm. uh, they are coming to a much brighter future than they had behind. I mean, a lot of these kids, this is the first place they ever had indoor plumbing. Uh, so it's, uh, there was a real loyalty that his staff had for him uh, throughout his later life, even as he fell on hard times. Okay. Uh, for example, at the time of his death, he was living in the guest room of the chauffeur's house. Oh. The chauffeur had taken him in. Oh, wow. Yeah. So very humble man. Um, we understand that Sir Henry Pellet was a philanthropist as well as a, a big dreamer, as you can all see. Um, we know that the Kiwanis Club on the of Ontario or uh, Toronto. Toronto of East Toronto. Right. Yeah, there was the, 
was here it, for yeah, many, many decades. In the 1930s, this became an abandoned building. Mm. Uh, yes. You had vagrants breaking in, there was no plumbing, the toilets didn't work, the sinks didn't work, it was a mess. And there was serious talk of tearing it down. Mm. Uh, the city owned it, but didn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And they really didn't have the money to tear it down anyway. They didn't, they didn't have the equipment to do it in the Great Depression. And along came the Kiwanis Club and they said, look, we'll rent it for a dollar a year. In exchange, we'll clean up ourselves, open up the public for tours, all profit will go to our charities. And they ran it for 70 years. Yes. Um, problem that they faced, because they, they were my original employers. Oh. The problem that they faced was that, you know, there was a time when if you were going, if you were a professional, you were a doctor, you were a lawyer, you joined the Kiwanis Club, you joined the Lions Club, you joined the Rotary Club. And uh, it's all social media now. And they simply did not have the people entering the club anymore that could really manage just the way they could in, in previous years. Mm. And so the city of Toronto really needed to go in a different direction. So, But no, we, we owe the existence of this building as, a, as for almost a century now yeah. as one of the most popular pots in, uh, you know, locations to visit in Toronto. Uh, we owe it largely to the Kiwanis Club. The room's called the Conservatory. It was actually, it was actually called the Napoleon Drawing Room when the Pellets lived here. Okay. And this is where Lady Mary Pellet would have had her garden parties. Mm. Now, mind you, when she lived here, you would have had a dozen tables of hundreds of plants on top. What's nifty is inside these marble planters, in the soil are hot water pipes running through. Mm. The hot water pipes heat the soil in the winter, which heats the plants in the winter. So you could have grown orchids in this room 100 years ago. <laughs> Not that the room would have been exceptionally warm, but the soil was so warm. Wow. Lady Mary used to have what were called uh, home days, where wherever it come out that Lady Mary was gonna have kind of an open house. So you'd show up and present your card to the butler, butler bring in the card, a little silver tray to Lady Mary. And if you were well respected in the community, you'd be invited inside. <laughs> uh, proper etiquette. When you're offered your third glass of tea, okay. that is your cue to say, oh, I'm sorry, you must be going. That's, that's how they got rid of you. They offered oh, you I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, good to know. Rick, our day with you has come to an end, unfortunately. Uh, you've been a bundle of joy. Oh. It is your lunchtime now, so we have to yes. let you go. <laughs> but uh, we thank you so much. It was, it was a Anytime. great pleasure. I'll be around for questions. Thank you very much. We have hit the end of the road today. Thank you for joining us, everyone, on our amazing trip to Casa Loma. If you haven't done so, come out, check out all these places. Casa Loma is open for you all week. Uh, so go on the website, check out the times, and they have proper COVID regulations, proper social distancing inside the house. If you haven't yet, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and the alarm button to be updated with new videos of Culture Channel and Explore Ontario. We hope to see you in our next excursions. Take care. Where are you going this way? He's over there.